CLC from the Newell family. For the last two years, Courageous Life has become a permanent part of our extended family. We want to take a moment and say thank you for the continued hope and inspiration that you provide to us, whether it's through the simple messages that we receive at exactly the right moments or the daily word that you provide to us. You continue to remind us that our Lord is our Savior and through Him, all things are possible. We miss each and every one of your bright and shiny faces and can't wait to the day we get to see you again. Hey everyone, you know us, so you know that um, being serious for this brief moment is clearly difficult. But we did want to take time to say that we love and thank all of you for all of your prayers throughout the the years that we've been at CLC. When we think about the hope of CLC, that is what we think about. I specifically think about the time... Um, gosh, two years of um, praying and wanting a new job, but then um, to find out that it is my purpose. We thank you all for all you've ever done, and we love you. Love you. Hi, CLC. We're the Montanes, and we miss you guys. The thing that gives us hope is that we know that CLC is family. Since the time that we walked through the doors a lot of years ago, it's always been this authentic and loving place that I always felt comfortable. Um, and that's still there, even though it's a different kind of format right now. It's still the same people, and they're still there no matter what you need. Absolutely, and the staff at CLC um, is amazing at uh, loving people, uh, helping people reach their God-given potential, and uh, caring for people. Um, and you know, it gives me great hope to realize that even when the building is empty or, and, and there's nobody inside it, that. Uh, that the church still stands because the church was never the building, but the church was the people. And that gives me great hope. Hi, we're Kevin and Mindy Gamber. And we're just here to tell you how thankful we are to be a part of Courageous Life Church. CLC has been such a fountain of hope in our lives for a new beginning, new relationships, healing in our lives, and we are just blessed to be a part of CLC. Hello, Pastor Brad from Courageous Life Church. I hope you enjoyed those testimonials that you heard of hope. I want you to find hope in today, all through our service. If you're joining us from online, from all over the world, enter in our worship. Enter into the message that God has for us today. And I want you to enjoy the hope of a risen Savior that He provides. Lord, as we come together on Easter Sunday, 2020, We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're in the middle of all kinds of problems. And people are saying that the the normal is not going to be normal anymore. But we know one thing that won't change. It's you, Lord, that you never change. You're the same today, yesterday, and forever. Thank you for your saving power. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Enjoy the service.
you lift your hands in your homes right now? Would you lift your hands wherever you may be, whether you're in your kitchen or in your living room? Come on, gather your family and lift your hands this Easter and begin to worship the Lord today. Lord, we thank you today because you're the one that gave it all for us. Father, and we give it all to you today. And we thank you, God, for another chance and another moment to come in your presence today. Father, and over these next few moments, God, this Easter, as we surrender our hearts and as we surrender our lives to you, Lord, I know it looks a little different. This is not the Easter we've planned. It's sad to some. The church, I want you to listen up. I believe in this time the church is more the church now than it's ever been. Because we're always the church. The people is who makes up the church. It's not this church building that we're in right now. It's not this church building. It's all of us in our homes, in our families, in our communities. We are the church. And you can either look at pain or you can look at the praise. You can either walk through with worry or you can walk through with worship. Jesus said, not my will, but your will. He chose what the Father wanted. He chose the heart of the Father. So you choose this morning how you're going to respond. You choose how you're going to walk through this situation because I choose right now to walk through each day with my hands up and I choose to worship. I choose because God chose me. I choose Him. And I choose right now. Would you choose today? Right now, some of you might even need to comment right below. Some of you need to be commenting, I choose to worship no matter what. I choose to give God my all. Would you do that today? Because the cross in Jesus Christ made the difference for us.
just lift your own worship today.
Come on, would you give the Lord a shout of praise? It's done. He paid it all for you today. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Worship the Lord today. It is done. Good morning and happy Easter. We are so glad that you're here today. I hope that you're able to make this day special and hopefully make this day feel a little bit normal. What isn't normal for a lot of you and for us as well is not being in church on Easter Sunday. But we're going to make the best of it. We are going to celebrate our risen Savior no matter what. It was so good to see so many of you on our drive through prayer night. So good to see your faces and pray with you. You know, this is a trying time right now, and a lot of us are feeling some different things. And I just want you to know that if you need prayer at any time, that you can contact us or any of our staff for prayer or just somebody to connect with and encourage you. Um, so just know that we're here for you for that. We also want to thank you so much for continuing to be faithful with your tithes and your offering and adjusting to the new ways to give. Now, you can still mail in your tithe to our church address, and you should find that here on your screen. You can also log on to our website and click on Give Here. And lastly, you can securely give on PayPal. Our email address is CourageousLifeChurch at Comcast.net. We love you all. We miss you. Happy Easter, guys. Enjoy the service. Good morning, Pastor Brad, lead pastor of Courageous Life Church. I'm glad you joined us this Easter 2020. I know we're in a quarantine. I know we're in a pandemic, but Jesus is alive. And thank you for joining us. And I hope you feel the presence of God. Some important things about Easter. I got to tell you real quick. One thing, Easter egg hunts prove that a child can find something when they want to. Gonna get a good amen at home. You know, Christians, for us, it's our weekend. It's the weekend of weekends. It's the Super Bowl of our lives. It's when Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive. Who's excited about that? You better know I am. Today, I wanna clear up some things that may be rolling around in your mind that maybe that you're in question of and you need some answers this morning and, and you're ready to receive the truth. And I want you to know, God will lead us this morning to all truth. It's important. And John 14 says this, it says, the world was not ready to receive him. They didn't know him. They were not ready to understand him. Uh, the world could, could not even see who he was and what he did and why he did it. But it's clear in this passage that we know him and uh, you know him because he's alive and he's alive in you. He's the bosses of bosses. He's the master of masters. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. And we're going to celebrate him today. And I'm so glad once again that you're with us this morning. Are you ready to receive Nudge your uh, friend that's watching with you or a family member. I know it's in tight corners and you're gathered around your homes. But as we begin today, I want you to, to cap capture this short version that I'm about ready to read in these passages. You know, Jesus was arrested. He was tortured, beaten, a crown of thorns upon his hand, head, and then he was handed over to be crucified here in John 19. Verse 16, they took Jesus, therefore, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the skull, which in the Hebrew, it means Golgotha. There was there they crucified him and with him two other men, one on either side and Jesus in between. Let me stop right there and say this. Jesus is always smack dab in the middle of our lives. He's right in between our problems. 
between you and your problem, between you and COVID-19. He's in between every problem that you're going in and, and out of in your life. He is always holding hell back and letting heaven in. He stands in the gap for our souls. He's in the middle. He's between life and death. And he's here. They said, we said, the Bible is very clear. If we lift Jesus up, before all men, they will be saved. Lift Jesus higher this morning. He is risen. Let's get back to verse 30. Therefore, when Jesus had received sour wine, he said, it is finished. Underline that in your thinking for a moment. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Verse 41 said, at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And in that garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Jesus is always cutting new ground for you and I. John 21, if we could jump to that, it says this, John 20, verse 1, early the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. That is some sweet sounds to our ears. The stone is gone. He is risen. He's alive. You know, I've entitled this message, which is a little different this morning. I've entitled it already and not yet. Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Jesus said it is finished. It, when he said that, it was a done deal. But I want you to know this morning, everyone that is listening, it was finished and Jesus said it, but he is not done yet. Yes, he gave his life for a one-time sacrifice. It is a done deal, but we're not in heaven yet either. Hello? How many is with me this morning? I want you to shout so loud that your neighbor wants to know what's going on in your house. You know, we're not in heaven yet. Look at the person in your room that's with you and just nudge him and say, God's not done with you yet. There's still healing. There's still hope. There's still a word that he's going to give. There's still a ministry that he has to do. He said it was finished, but he's not done with you yet. See, we're somewhere in the middle of already and not yet. Jesus said, yes, it is finished. It's a blessed assurance. He set up a pre-existing plan that provides long-term care with his blood. You know, his blood speaks a better word and it still speaks today. You know, I know this and I know you know it too, but when that stone was gone, redemption from a loving savior, it was accomplished. He, he paid that price for our souls in full. He ascended to hell and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and he let a train of captives out. You know, there may be a young person listening right now and you think I went to and talking about some level that you've went to in your video game. I want you to come back to reality this morning and know that Jesus went to hell and back for you and you can receive him, trust his Bible. Hey, have a reality check this morning. Read your word. If you accept him, you get a one-way ticket to heaven when you die. One way ticket, paid in full to glory. And you may even get a t-shirt. I don't know. Amen. But you might. We are living in the already and the not yet. Now stay with me. This is going to take a turn here because the Apostle Paul is going to help me explain this thought today. Romans 8, starting at verse 22. We know that all creation has been groaning with the pains of childbirth up to this present time. However, not only creation groans, but we who have the spirit of the first God's gift also groan inwardly. We groan as, as, as eagerly await 
for our adoption, the freeing of our bodies from sin. You see, Paul answers something that's been rolling around in your mind where you can't figure it out, why you groan on the inside and there's a struggle that is on the inside and there doesn't seem a solid peace that you get some peace, but it's not fulfilled and it really doesn't happen because you're not home yet. And you're still wrestling around with you. And, and we're waiting for something to fix you. But there sometimes there's only one thing that's going to fix you. It's when we go to heaven and you're not home yet. You're somewhere in the already and the not yet. Let that sink in for a minute. Sometimes the answers are only in heaven. It's we can only have some things taken care of when you're home. So now we wait. Somewhere in the middle of the already and the not yet. Many things were accomplished at Easter. The death, the burial, the resurrection. These three areas I'm going to touch on and, and talk about it, and they're going to overlap sometimes. If you're following along in your notes, uh, God be with you. And all CLC church members said, amen. Number one in your notes, if you've downloaded it, Jesus finalized the travel plans for our eternal home in heaven. You know, the grave could not hold him even though Satan wanted to, even though the world wanted it to happen, Jesus is alive. They placed guards outside the tomb. They didn't want any trickery, but when those two visiting angels showed up and rolled the stone, they ran for their lives. The grave could not hold him. He is risen. You know, I stood at my, my own dad's grave after I preached the funeral and doing his gravesite, I knew my dad was not in that casket. He was at home with Jesus. That sounds good to me, having a new home. But if you're listening right now and, and maybe you're in the already and not yet, John 14 says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have not told you. I go and to prepare a place for you. Did you hear that? To prepare a place. Yes, you have a home, a mansion. But it's not done yet. Because he said, I'm leaving to prepare it. Now, before the pandemic, Kim and I, we had all packed our bags. We were all ready and set uh, the preparations for travel arrangements to Mexico. And we were all ready to go and, and everything all of a sudden because of this COVID-19 got canceled. They began to close the borders. They were, they were travel bans. And even in the U.S., we thought, well, okay, we won't go to Mexico. Well, where could we go? And this, the restrictions, it was basically nowhere but around the general area. The Florida beaches were even closed. I mean, we couldn't go nowhere. And I just asked him, and I know she was hurt, and we were all ready to go. The boys were ready to go. And I just asked him, since we have to stay locally, would you want to go to Jamesport, Missouri? And, you know, how many knows that Jamesport, Missouri is a far cry from Mexico. Welcome to Jamesport. You know, Jesus said, our destination for sure is heaven and we have a better home awaiting. But if you look at this, the not yet, I am preparing a mansion. It's in an extreme makeover. He's still in the remodeling process and it's still taking place that we know today. And I don't know about you, but let me have a little fun with this because I know it's not by works that we're saved, but God is looking at our rewards to give us for what we do on this earth. And the disciples even asked that, can I sit on your right or your left? And of course he said that was only by the uh, decision of the Father, but but let's just think about it this morning, and I don't know about you, we're not saved by works, but God knows I'm wanting a little hunting property, 
behind my mansion and glory. Who's with me? Maybe even a, a little fishing pond so I can go out. He, hey, he knows I love that stuff and he knows that you love it too. The bottom line about Easter morning is, is we're not home yet. Jesus says, I must work the works of the Father while it is still day. You know, we got to face it. We're not saved by service, but that doesn't mean we don't do anything for God. Hello? Can I get an amen at home? You know, he wants us to use those talents that he has given us and not to waste them, but to invest them for the service and for the purpose of saving lives and spreading the gospel. You know, what do you want? Would you settle for a Cheryl she shack? are a mansion on the streets of gold. You know, we're all somewhere in the middle, the already and not yet. Let me just take you to a place where Jesus had went to after he was risen. He, he was instructing, of course, his disciples before he left. And, and he said, while he was still speaking to them, he was taken up from them into the clouds. And, and the disciples were looking intently at him as he descended, uh, ascended into heaven. And, and we realized that they were just going to stay there. And, a couple, and heaven realized it. And so God sent a couple of angels there to say, hey, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking and staring? Get going. And, and you, hey, look that up. It's an Acts 1. What he was saying to them, I, I want you to get this, this, this whole picture of Acts 1, starting at verse 9, when this story took place. It's a picture of Jesus wanting to instruct them to the very last minutes. It was like a, a, a loving heavenly father just, just wanting to care for those disciples that finally God said, okay, I'm, I'm going to have to take you up. And, and can you imagine what caught their eye and caught their mind in their hearts as they stared intently as Jesus was leaving? I'd have loved to hear those final words that he said to them. I would imagine they sounded like this. I, I'm sure it was. It was like, go get the promise. Go to the world and go make disciples. Right now, I know that you're thinking, where can I go and what can I do during a pandemic? And I'm not going anywhere. You know, I understand what you're saying and how you feel, but there is no time like the present to spread the gospel and the joy of the truth of the living, risen Savior. There's no time like it. Don't be pushed around by your fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. He said it was finished. Salvation was done, but the church is not done. And we're not been taken out of the way. Something else was happening while he was suffering and the death, burial, burial and resurrection. Number two, his wounds provided healing for our bodies today. Praise God for that. First Peter said this in chapter two, verse 24. And he said he bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds, we are healed. His wounds. I'm talking more than the, the stripes that was put upon his back, but also his hands, his side, his feet by his wounds. We are healed. But here's also a point that we need to understand that's coming into play. The already and not yet. Because people ask, you know, why hasn't God healed me yet? I've asked him to, but I'm still going through this sickness. Why did my loved one die of COVID-19 or even got the disease I know all these are questions and hey, I have them too as a, as a pastor. But I, one thing I can reassure you of is this. I know that God and it's God's will that he wants to heal you. It's his will. 
If you have a loved one right now where somebody has the virus or you've lost somebody due, due to the virus, I pray that God would strengthen the family that's going through this suffering. Heal the one that is still wrestling with it. And God, I pray that you would wrap your arms and bring them around your love right now. I can't tell you when or what ha what and when it's going to take place when someone's going to get healed. But I can tell you this, I, we can always go to God because I know it's his will and we can ask him to move the schedule up. We can ask him to change the time of the healing because I know there's a process that, that, that God has and a plan. His ways are higher in our ways, but maybe we can just do like Joshua did and say, could you just stop the sun? Could you just move the schedule, change the day, heal my loved one or heal us? I can't tell you what happened and when it's going to happen. I don't know if it's on this side of, the, of eternity or if it's on that side, on this side of the curtain or that side of the curtain. I don't know when it's going to take place, but I know it's God's will that he wants to heal you. Sometimes it comes down to a question. Is there a reason why I'm not healed? Unanswered prayers stink. We don't like them, but we can trust God is working things out his way and for his purpose. And it will be okay in the end, even though we don't like it now. The novelist Dennis Covington writes, mysteries is not the absence of meaning, but the present of more meaning than we can comprehend. But we question don't we? I'm remembering the question that was asked in John 9, verse 1. Who sinned, Rabbi? His parents or him? Jesus said neither. But it was the works of God might be displayed in him. Second Corinthians 4, 17 says that the work of for us far more exceedingly an internal weight of glory. There's more at stake. There's more things happening. And I know that these light afflictions and these, these moments of pain are for a bigger purpose. Light afflictions last for a moment and cannot even comprehend the bigger picture sometimes of what God's doing. But we do know this, it's temporary. It's in the already, in the not yet. It's hard to accept the reasons why we're not healed. Hello? Why things aren't getting better? Are you with me? Listen and watch the advice that, that you give the unhealed. Because it's kind of dangerous, folks, if I could instruct you this morning as, as your pastor. It, don't be like Job's friend and, and fix blame. Just pray for them and care for them until the answer comes. People that don't understand shouldn't say anything. They should just try to understand and love them. Why? Because they reduce God to just a little smaller than the size of their problem. If you don't. I pray with absolute reservations, no reservations. I'm completely convinced God is going to heal you. And heal each and every one of you. So as a pastor, I pray for miraculous. I ask for, for that God would move and, and that he would change the timetable table and move the schedule up for your healing. That's what a miracle is. When God brings a taste of eternity into our presence. Amen. I believe you're moving closer each day to your healing. You know, I look at Hebrews 11. I look at those men that were and people that were were tortured and they were sawed in two and and they were all kinds of terrible things that that happened to them. And in Hebrews 11, the Hebrew Hebrew Hall of Fame, if I could call it that, they, there were amazing heroes of faith and they they hung on to God's promises. And God was so pleased with them. But if you read this entire passage of Hebrews 11, 39 through 40, you see 
they still didn't get the promise at the end. God had a better plan. His, his ways are so much higher. They, they gave everything and he loved them and it, they were blessed, but they still didn't get that total promise because God had a different plan for them in glory. When, P, when my son Parker, when he fell sick months ago with influenza B, his, his temperature spiked to 105.6. He went into a seizure. We had to call an ambulance and take him to Children's Mercy. And, and, and that was such a frightening thing for me. But it woke me up as a dad. And I was aware of the seriousness even now more when I see COVID-19. And it just, it makes me understand that that loving, loving Heavenly Father, my God, was showing me and preparing me for what could even be worse. Two unchangeable truths. God is loving today. And number two, someday everything will make sense. You know, I want you to know this. In this hope we can stand even when we suffer for reasons we don't understand. And even when our prayers are not answers, answered, the way we've hoped. You know, I'm told that the evangelist Oral Roberts, when he conducted his healing crusades, he often said this, not everyone would leave healed, but he wanted everyone to leave feeling love. Do you feel love this morning? That brings me to my last point, which should have been first. Jesus brought salvation into, wor into the world to save us from our sins. We gave, he gave himself as a, a redeemer for the whole human race. That was the proof at the right time that God wanted everyone to be saved according to 1 Timothy 2 verse 6. Now when I say already and not yet, when I come to this point, Yes, sin has already been paid for, but it's not yet been received by everyone. Remember, the world was not ready for him. The world did not receive him. The world did not know him. Yes, he redeemed the world, but they were not ready to receive him. Are you? Are you ready to this morning? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You know, Pilate, Pontius Pilate ordered that a sign would be put upon his head, the king of the Jews. This made the Jewish religious leaders of that day so mad. They, they, they looked at it and read, king of the Jews, and they said, no, it isn't. No, he isn't. This morning, does God have to put a sign? Does God have to give you a sign? Does he have to write it out for you this morning? Jesus is king. Jesus. Remember Kanye West? He sung that song. Jesus is Lord. Is it going to take some sign to get you to understand this morning? Are you ready to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Here's how it takes place. Number one, if you're following along in your notes, it says this, repent of your sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1, 9. So let me just say it like this. If you can name what you're doing wrong, you know better. Number two, you say it will... If you see, you, you say and believe in your heart that he is Lord. Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the, the dead, you will be saved. Number three, make a decision to accept the truth. Acts 2, after P Peter preached to them, he said, save yourself from this corrupt generation. And those that accepted his message were saved. 
Don't settle for Jamesport, Missouri this morning. Settle for the travel plans that have been made for your home in heaven. Somebody said to me one time, I'm close. I'm very close to being saved. I'm close to knowing Jesus Christ. You, friends, this morning, that only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. You need to receive Jesus just as fast as you can. You need to accept his message. Don't be like the world does that think they know him, but they don't. And I'm reminded in the already and not yet when Moses walked up to that sea, to the Red Sea, what was he going to do? He was already there. And then God opened the Red Sea and they were able to cross to safety. Are you at the already? But not yet? Have you walked right up to a problem but you haven't made it yet? You need a Red Sea moment where God brings some clarity to you. Now, I know there's trouble today. Second Corinthians says this in four verse eight. It says that we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despaired, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I want you to know when Jesus Christ came to this world and suffered and died and third day rose again. He, this weekend uh, that we celebrate Easter, he gave a powerful deadly blow to death, hell, and the grave and punched Satan right in the mouth. Can I good a, good a, get a good amen and make your neighbors mad? Amen, let them hear it. Don't you see what happened in this world lately? How everything seems to be falling apart? You can trust one thing, that stone was rolled away. The stone is gone. And because it's gone, he's alive. And because he's alive, we can come alive when we die. Our worship team is preparing to come back. And as we celebrate Easter, I want you to join in with our worship team. And I want you to lift your hands right where you're sitting or where maybe you're standing. And I want you to begin to lift your, uh, your heart and your mind to a loving Savior today. And I want you to pray and receive Christ this Easter morning. Some of you are at the already, but not yet. Well, now it's time. If you need Jesus Christ this morning, would you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe that you, Jesus, rose from the dead so I don't have to. I believe you died for every one of my sins on that cross. Today I receive you as Lord and Savior. Come in totally to me as I come totally clean for you. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you've just passed from death unto life. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're born again. And now, guess what? We're ready to join on that day. Now that you're saved, you're in the already and not yet. Let's go to work for God. Let's serve Him with all our hearts. It's Easter Sunday. He is risen. And now you have just risen out of darkness, out of sin. You've passed from death unto life. There's nothing I want that your love doesn't offer. There's nothing I've done that your grace won't cover. Because it's not a to you say so is you are faithful God you're faithful the cross is all the confidence I need cause your love won't give up on me you never make a promise you 
Like us, share us, subscribe. Jesus is Lord.